Hello and welcome to the Daily Decrypt episode 17. My name is Amanda B. Johnson and I am your ever-loving host. Today, Bitcoin is $293. Litecoin is $3.10. Ethereum is 88 cents. And Peercoin is 35 cents. Today's episode is brought to you by Free Talk Live. Twenty-year-old developer Andrew Sampson released an app called Auris not too long ago, and many likened it to the popcorn time of music. In a recent interview with International Business Times, Sampson explained that he plans to incorporate pro-tip Bitcoin tipping into Auris's platform to allow users to tip in Bitcoins those who upload the most and best content. Many indie artists rejoiced at this news as they themselves naturally hope to make their music as available to fans as possible, but Samson has removed the RS download from his website as he is now being sued by no less than four music cartels. The RS client for both Windows and Linux is still reportedly available on the Pirate Bay, however. Whether or not these current versions incorporate ProTip is unknown. While Samson's particular attempt at software distribution might not end up working out for him, the wild popularity the software acquired during its short existence at rs.me will likely lay the groundwork for the next popcorn time of music. In more cryptocurrency news, the Bitcoin hardware wallet Trezor is now offering a beta wallet which offers more features. These include the labeling of Bitcoin addresses, the ability to add comments to transactions, the renaming of accounts, and full-text search of all wallet history. Alternatively, using the Encompass wallet means that Trezor supports not only Bitcoin cold storage, but also Mazacoin, Litecoin, and Dash. Trezor also serves as more than a wallet, as a handful of websites have also incorporated it as a credentialless login. Trezor users can now simply plug in a device to have an account at sites like Bidex, Cashila, CoinMap, coin payments, strip for bit, or telebit. The company calls this passwordless login the Trezor Connect. In further crypto news, the popular Amazon wishlist swap site Purse.io has launched their own subreddit. Purse hopes that this subreddit will serve as a support forum of sorts for users who have questions about how to buy and sell Amazon wishlist orders for Bitcoin. And Meerkat power user and Bitcoin fan Suzanne Nguyen has scheduled an online Bitcoin conference called MicroBitcoin, which will take place on December 5th for the entirety of the day. All are welcome to pre-register, and the conference will take place at blab.im. And speaking of events, there is a host of 3D printing conferences taking place around the globe soon. The next couple of months, we'll see 3D printing conferences in Prague, London, Raleigh, and Calcutta. The increasing popularity of such events is not surprising. Take, for example, this story today from Zebrella. A company called Contour Crafting has demonstrated a working model of a giant 3D printer they have designed to print an entire house in less than 24 hours. The houses are pre-embedded with conduits for electrical, plumbing, and air conditioning. Contour Crafting has even designed machines they believe will be capable of printing skyscrapers as the machines can climb. On the health side of 3D printing news, the company Szechuan Revotech claims that they can now use stem cell bio-ink to print blood vessels. They're calling their bio-ink Biosynsphere, and they hope that it will allow for the customizable printing of patient-specific organ transplant needs. And in security news, Silent Circle has released the Black Phone 2 after a quick sellout of their earlier release of Black Phone 1. Its creators claim that the Black Phone has built-in capabilities to stop surveillance and spyware. The Black Phone 2 has not yet sold out and is available for a cool $800. Today's episode has been sponsored by Free Talk Live, where listeners are invited to call in anytime between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. every night of the week to say what's on their mind. And that has been your Daily Decrypt, signing off.